Beside the big four traditional measurements of flow, level, pressure, and temperature, there are four others that are very often made in process plants. pH, ORP, conductivity, and density. Hi, I'm Walt Boys, Editor-in-Chief of Control and ControlGlobal.com, and this is a ControlGlobal.com Back to Basics, and we're going to take a look at the wet chemistry measurements and density. This Back to Basics is sponsored by Endress and Hauser, the largest maker of field instruments and analysis products in the world. Visit them at www.us.endress.com. The first three measurements, pH, ORP, and conductivity, are deceptively simple and deceptively similar. In fact, many vendors produce multi-parametric transmitters to which any or all three of these sensors can be attached. But as with flow and level, these measurements aren't always straightforward, and in some cases they're downright hard to do. Let's look at pH first. Standing approximately for percent hydrogen, for our purposes at least, pH is a scale from zero, or highly acidic, to 14, or highly basic. Neutral pH is 7.0, right in the middle of the scale. Arnold O. Beckman designed the first reliable pH meter in the 1930s and was the first to produce a reliable glass electrode. Unilock, now a trade name of Emerson, produced a very stable and highly accurate electrode that used a redwood junction. There have been other advances. But while the design of transmitter electronics has changed and developed widely, the technology of pH sensors has remained relatively constant. pH meters are normally used in process applications in a feedback loop. The sensor is inserted into the line at the desired location, and the acid or base required to adjust and maintain the pH is injected upstream of the sensor location. The problem is that the location of the sensor may be very, very far in terms of process flow time away from the injection point of the chemical. This makes the pH control loop inherently unstable. Proper design should have the injection point immediately upstream of some kind of kinetic mixer in the line with the pH sensor located within a few feet of the outlet of the mixer. An indicator sensor or a compound loop component should be located at the point where the pH really needs to be measured. This application and installation rule should be applied to all chemical injection points regardless of whether you're measuring pH, ORP, or conductivity. ORP, or oxidation reduction potential, also called redox, is defined by Wikipedia this way. Oxidation is the loss of electrons or an increase in oxidation state by a molecule, atom, or ion. Reduction is the gain of electrons or a decrease in oxidation state by a molecule, atom, or ion. Well, for our purposes, ORP sensors and transmitters can be calibrated to indicate the state of many reactions. One of the common measurements that ORP sensors are calibrated for is chlorine. ORP is a very inexpensive way to measure chlorine residual in water and control a disinfection injection system. Conductivity sensors, last of the linked three of wet chemistry sensors, measure the specific conductivity in micro-mohs or micro-siemens. A MO, MHO, is the reciprocal of an ohm, OHM. Conductivity is a measure of the specific conductance in a fluid. It ranges from zero to very, very high. Distilled water is close to zero, while seawater has a conductivity value of over 30,000 microsiemens. Conductivity sensors are often used to measure salinity, for which they can be calibrated in fluids such as water and other aqueous chemicals. Very often, the same transmitter can be used for these measurements because the cells or sensors produce a millivolt output that is very similar. This makes maintaining these types of analyzers relatively easily. All of these sensors are designed to be easily replaceable. You can even get hot tap versions so they can be changed when the process is running. Wet chemistry sensors must be calibrated on a regular basis. pH sensors should be checked against the international calibration standard fluids on a daily basis, if not more frequently. The fourth analyzer variable we're going to talk about is density. Density, or specific gravity, is a measure of mass, and when multiplied by volume throughput from a volumetric flow meter, like a magnetic flow meter, 
The resultant is mass flow. Water has an apparent density of 0.998 SGU at 20 degrees Celsius and is by definition a specific gravity of 1. The density of slurries and solutions is very important in many process manufacturing streams and several technologies have been developed to detect and display density really quite accurately. The four most common means of measuring density are the use of a Coriolis mass flow meter, a vibrating tube densitometer, an ultrasonic density meter, or a gamma nuclear densitometer. Because a Coriolis mass flow meter measures mass flow directly, the density of the fluid being measured can be inferred from the mass and the throughput of the meter. An ultrasonic density meter uses the delta between the measured speed of sound and the calibrated speed of sound in water to produce a differential which is proportional to the density of the process fluid. Now a gamma densitometer consists of a radionuclide source, typically cesium, in a fail-safe shielded holder on one side of the pipe and a radiation detector, usually a scintillation counter, on the other side mounted in a permanent configuration. The source shines gamma radiation through the pipe wall, through the fluid, through the other pipe wall and into the detector. The device must be zeroed on clear fluid, usually water, and then the differential between the radiation received at the detector on clean, clear fluid and the radiation received at the detector when process is flowing allows the electronics in the transmitter to calculate density quite precisely. Over the years, due to the increasing regulation of industrial nucleonic devices and the increasing size of Coriolis mass flow meters, the use of Coriolis mass flow meters has been increasing while the use of gamma densitometers has been decreasing. Still, there is always room for more than one technology and there are still applications where a gamma densitometer is superior in corrosive or abrasive slurries, for example. And there you have it. This has been a back to basics look at the three most common wet chemistry variables, pH, ORP, and conductivity, and the measurement of density. This controlglobal.com back to basics video was sponsored by Anderson Hauser, the largest manufacturer of field devices in the world. Visit them at www.us.endress.com. I'm Walt Boys, and thanks for watching. You can see more videos at controlglobal.com or on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. We'll see you there.